Can I call a meeting to order? I guess we'll start off with a roll call. Uh, Meredith? Here. Bevel? Here. Bryant? Coleman? Ferris? Here. Freeman? Here. Gillis? Here. Kidd? Provost? Taylor? Wyatt? Here. Perry? Light? Here. Gibson? Day? Here. Clark? Smith? Here. Neff? And Cooper. It's been a while, so I guess you might look at the last minute. The last the meeting you had in February. Any discussion on that? It's not like to the motion to approve. Unless we don't want to approve it. Double. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. And second? I'll second. All right, cool. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. So now we got some new business. I guess, Craig, you want to discuss the utility line ordinance? Yeah. Um, we've had some, some issues um, come up where private uh, sewer lines, laterals have been uh, placed through our storm drainage pipes. So basically what they're doing is there'll be a storm drain there and they'll bust a hole through the pipe and put their storm pipe or their sewer pipe through it and cover it back up. No. Yeah. They're they're all over and they're all over the place throughout the city. They're putting um, their sewage and putting in a storm pipe? Well, they're not just they're passing just through. passing through. Oh, passing through. Just passing oh, through. Just going, you know, it but what it, it causes blockages in the, in the system. And uh, there, there's places throughout the city where there's there'll be a, a junction box that is there just because utility lines are penetrating the storm drain. There's uh, gas lines, uh, water lines, <coughs> sewer lines that pass through. And so there'll be a manhole there just to be able to open it up and clear those things, debris and stuff out. But we have uh, a lot of uh, uh, you know, privately owned sewer lines through the system as well. And you can drive around, you can see in some of the ditches, you'll see a sewer lateral laying in the bottom of the ditch, exposed uh, in the bottom of the ditch. And it, it, just, it causes problems. We have no ordinance in place that prohibits that. Wow. You know, we, so, um, we we discourage it heavily, but we really don't have a, a law that says you can't do it. And so we uh, we we'd like to add some language that that gives us you know the ability to say no, you can't do that. There's an ordinance against it. We need some separation between the two. And uh, so we just we threw some stuff out just to to you know make Susan squirm in her chair. You know um, it but, worked. You know, but I mean, we want we want to. I mean, we get the phone companies plowing through our pipes, uh, damaging them. Um, and I know City Water Light has the same problem with the phone companies and cable companies drilling through their sewer lines with utilities. And when we find them, you know, a, a lot of them, we just say, well, there's not anything we can do about them right now. We just want to prohibit any new ones. From, from occurring, you know. So, uh, cool. uh, so is the problem more than crossing the, cro you know, uh, the, the um, one foot vertical clearance and staying out of the uh, storm drain itself, right? Yeah, the idea is to not penetrate through yeah. the system. Um, I, th yeah. I think for us, our, the biggest red flag we see is that five foot horizontal separation for us because I think we can think of example. Well, I know we can think of examples right now where, if we had to be more than five foot off of the storm drain, yeah. we wouldn't have a place to put the utilities. I mean, I'm just thinking about what we had to do over here on Patrick uh, when we did those relocations, and y'all came in with this with the storm drain, and I think the water lines maybe a couple foot off of that now, yeah. and that's after improvements. And then the thinking about the districts downtown and what we're working on there. Yeah. I can envision that there's not going to be five foot there when you talk well, about water lines or, or, could, or could we, utility could, poles or could we add something that you know gives us you know exception? I don't think. I mean, Craig, realistically, 
Yeah. That ain't gonna work. Uh, five feet. That ain't gonna I work. Mean, you, 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 uh, wait, 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 so you get your, the storm drain, mm -hmm. and you're saying five feet away from that is where you, the closer you get to it. <clears throat> with with lines running parallel to the storm drain. I mean, in the right of way, we have we have 15 feet behind the curb to the property line, and then we have another 10 foot utility easement. So there's 25 feet in there. So why can't you get five foot away from the storm drain in, in a new construction? I, I, I have no idea why you can't get five feet away. I don't know, AT&T duct going down through there and gas and But in new construction, but in new construction, you have 25 feet. Why are you, why are you putting everything so close to I think it's right. it's easier new construction for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's, that's we do, we will have sidewalks or trails we'll have to avoid as well. Yeah. Plus, it's not safe in the corridors. But always do a utility corridor, and everybody has to be in a certain place. Yeah. You know. But on your on your storm drain, it's going to be behind the curb within the fifteen feet that you got mm -hmm. on the inside, mm -hmm. and so then the property line is fifteen feet behind the curb, and you got a ten foot. Utility easement. Utility easement back there. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, obviously you can't move your storm drain back away because you're dropping, the, you know, the well, water. You can. I mean, you do extended throats and, and yeah, everything to, be, to get, get them. But usually the storm drain's right behind the back right. of the cover. Mm -hmm. But, you know, but it, but in new construction, I mean, if we start saying new construction, correct. That's another thing Good. we thought of. It doesn't say anything about it. This, this so, is all, this, this section of the ordinance, is you know this is the storm water so it's 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 in the you know new it's in the when property is developed section of the code book so if you were to redevelop a, a lot and put a duplex or triplex but, on a lot right here off of Huntington yeah. you got to fall into this well that's what I'm saying we can write we can we can add a section that adds an exception for uh, infill development or or corridor you know uh, you know reconstruction or something like that to add an exception for that and I, I'm you know I'm not opposed to that but my biggest problem is is when I show up and a plumber is putting a, putting a pipe through the storm drain yeah. and he's saying that's the only way I can sewer it well you're going to have to figure out something else because you know the, the sewers too low or too high for you to sewer this lot it's you know not serviceable without damaging the city and so you're gonna have to put in a something else you have to run an extension of the sewer main to serve your lot you know or you're gonna have to put in a, a pump station so you you're under force so you're not going through our system you know instead of just running a gravity thing that's what the big issue is and then, then we have the gas companies and everything else. You know, there, if there's, if the, if it's under pressure, like a water line or something like that, I mean, there is no reason why those things should be penetrated through our, through our system. Now, gravity sewer, you know, now the, the horizontal separation is not really that big a, not that big of a deal to me. But, you know, it would be nice if, you know, you had some room. To, to, to be able to work on the facilities. But if, if we just scratch that five foot one, that's not my big issue. The big issue is the penetration through the system. Yeah. You know. I, I agree, we don't want to be there either. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I, I just I well, can envision a lot of places where this five foot would be very yeah. burdened. Well, it, well, what it comes to is these, these private laterals, City Water Light says, those aren't ours. Those belong to the property owner. So I'm not even dealing with City Water Light on it. And so if I tell the property owner, sorry, you cannot go through our pipe, there's an ordinance that prohibits it, you have to, you know, do a sewer extension and go underneath it and put a manhole on your property if you want to sewer it, you know. Um, but they are supposed to be getting a permit from us, from you and from us when they do those, <coughs> and we inspect those. Mm -hmm. And they penetrate through our system. Well, they shouldn't be, unless they're not, I oh, yeah. mean, they might not be getting permits. Yeah. I mean, I mean, even even right now, I'm dealing with one with uh, the, I think Jeremy, no, I think George Hammond's the engineer on it, but you know, big sewer line up here by any NEA Baptist Hospital, where yeah. you guys want to span across the, the ditch, you know, exposed, you know, that's now I there is. We're there working is, on that. I didn't know we were talking about expanding, uh, expanding it. 
Yeah, there, there's well, there's two proposals. There's one to put a box culvert in and go above the box culvert mm -hmm. through the ditch, and the other one is just to, to clear span across the ditch, you know, five foot off the bottom. So as far as the box culvert idea, is that our idea? Grant, Grant sent both of them to me, but hmm. you know, but those, those were problem issues. And I realized that you know the sewer system, you know, gravity wise, there's a ditch there. We got to get through it, but you know. We still don't need these penetrations that, that through our system that are going to cause long term You're problems. You're talking about open ditches as well as closed systems. Pipe. Yeah. I can't believe somebody would cut through a pipe though and leave it through there. Mm -hmm. It happens a lot. That's just amazing. Yeah, I, I never yeah. agree. Yeah. I, I never well, agree. Yeah. The plumber is one thing, but the real issue is directional board. Yeah. If somebody's, oh. if somebody's rolling along, they don't have a clue. No, they have no idea. Yeah, they go through sewer. Uh, never yeah. thought of that. Yeah. 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 So, anyway, we would like to see some language added to give us something. Now, what that language ultimately ends up saying, that's the reason why we're discussing it. We just, we're just throwing something out here to, to discuss. I mean, none of this is that, you know, if, if we can't get a foot of separation between them, it, and it's a good premise. I mean, it, it's a good concept. We'd like to be that far away from you so we can dig it up and yeah. you can dig it up and yeah. your stuff. It, you know, just is there anything magic about the five feet horizontal separation? No, there's really nothing magic about it. It's just trying to give everybody enough room to, to dig up without, you know, getting too close. I know that when if a water line's closer to it and it's got a saddle on it going to the service, and, you know, the, and the pipes up next to it, it's hard to deal with, you know, and there's no reason why we should be doing that in new construction. Now, if we want to put, if we want to put a, a asterisk for new construction, you know, and then add, you know, for existing retro of an existing developed corridor, then we're going to do the best we can. Um, you know, the only thing I was concerned about is you got your water line here, you got your sewer line here, you got your, uh, your, AT and T right here, and you've got your gas line right here. Yeah, I mean, yeah. and when you're all going together, at, at well, water, water and or sewer, water and electric is usually on one side of the road. Yeah. Sewer is on the other side new of the road. New construction, you know, <laughs> and new construction. Yeah. But you know, health department says that you have to have what I think 18 inches of separation between a water line and the sewer line. Well, storm sewer is a sewer line. It's not, oh. a, it's not a sanitary sewer, it's a sewer line. Yeah. It's a storm sewer line. 18 inches would be more reasonable. Well, we said one foot. So no, you're foot. No, the health department says there's supposed to be 10 foot of separation between a water line and a sewer line. Yeah. And we cut it down to five feet. That's what health department says about parallel construction. Really? That one foot is, is horizontal or vertical separation. And health department says 18 inches. So we're it's actually sanitary, less, so not sanitary, not it's it's sewer, it just yeah. says sewer. 18 inches of separation between the sewer line. Sanitary, 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 san
multifamily. That, that, that's, that's the reason I'm saying we can add an exception for redevelopment of an existing corridor. You know, we, we can add that exception for, you know, systems that are, that are current in there. I, I mean, I don't have a problem with that, but there's no reason why we can't meet this in a new construction situation. Yeah, because you got a 60 foot easement, backs the curb back there from 30 feet, so you got 15 feet on each side. And then there's the only thing you're gonna have is a little bit longer, or maybe a five foot longer when you put your lateral across. You know, but still, if you run in parallel, I can't imagine why it would be a problem if you got that much space. Well, that curve, you got, say what you got exactly from the curve, because you got sidewalks too, right? We don't want to be under sidewalks. You, you, I mean, if you're going to be, if you're going to be that far away from the sewer, you're going to have the, the back of curve, you have a six foot green space, and then a six foot sidewalk. So that's already 12 feet. Our storm drain is in at 12 feet okay. already. Okay, and so if you, if, you get by, if you get right behind the sidewalk, you're already six feet away from the storm drain. Right, and then how much do you have after sidewalk? Um, you'll have 12 feet, 10 foot easement, and, and uh, 13 feet, 10 foot easement, three Three-foot foot left in the right away. See, a lot of people think that their property line goes to the back of the curve, but that's not true. Oh, no. I mean, that's, that's what's platted in all new developments, is the right-of-way plus a 10-foot utility easement. So say that again. So you get your storm drain, you get your back of curve. Your back of curve, you get six foot of green space, six foot of sidewalk. And then I've got three foot of right-of-way to the property. And 10-foot right? utility easement. And so let's just say on the easiest side, you got a storm drain pipe, you got a water main that's going to fit in that three foot area past the sidewalk. Okay. So then you've got 10 feet to put gas, uh, electric, telephone. telephone. Mm -hmm. That's Small not enough room. Cable TV. That's not enough room. Mm -hmm. Is how big of that easement needs to be? It would be plenty of room if we'd, if we'd do a corridor in there and show everybody where they got to be and require them to be in certain locations. I mean, it's the best thing we did in Northwest Arkansas is do utility corridors. Utilities were behind it um, because in new construction up there, everybody was getting in everybody's way. It was the first person in, first person that laid lines, just got That's in the true. middle, and everybody That's had to work true. around them. I agree with that. We um, required them to put a utility corridor in, and everybody had to be in that 25 foot area, and you had a certain spot, whether vertically or horizontally, in that 25 foot area where you were going to be. So and if what you do weren't you do there, the first then, guy goes in and he's not where he's supposed to be. Then he gets to move it. And how long does that take? We got poles all over town with cable TV on it that we're waiting on. on but we're TV really talking road. about new construction, yeah. new development. You know, that yeah, you know that you're supposed to have your electric lines within. Oh. So if it's what you're asking for, does that add to the 25 feet variance that's already, that, that they're already getting, that the property owner has already given up? No. And really, the property owner's not giving up anything. They never had the 15 feet behind the curb. That's, That's always been right, right away. away. And the 10 foot utility easement, they own the property, but there's utility easement back at the front edge of their property line. But as I say, a lot of people assume their property goes all the way out to the curb, but it really doesn't. So if you had, what you're saying then, if you had, all right, the first person to go in is the water line. Second guy's going to go in is the cable TV. Third guy's going to go in is whatever, and everybody's got their their spot to go down. Right. New construction. You don't cut it. You don't cut everybody's lines that way. Everybody and that's knows true. Right. That really is true. Can you find that sure. language from Northwest Arkansas yeah. for us to look at at our next meeting? Yeah. 
and talk about it a little bit more. I'd I mean, like this, to talk this, to somebody that's got some experience yeah. with the law and stuff. I mean, this, this, this isn't something that I was trying to get you guys to pass on to city council tonight, today, you know. I mean, it was, it was mainly for the discussion of it, of a problem that we're, that we're seeing, and we'd like to find a, a regulatory type solution to it. Because um, it, it, it is a problem for us. As a former developer, I don't see a problem having a standardized yeah. wherever. But when you put that back there anywhere within those 15 feet, it could be yeah. close to the curb, further back, or meandering yeah. down through. I think a standard distance back. I think that's a good, good, good idea. A decent like idea. idea. Yeah. When I used to bear telephone cable, right. if you had knew where you were going mm -hmm. and you didn't have to worry about the gas, and mm -hmm. which I've cut a number of gas oh, lines before, right. and didn't have to worry about that, that's, that's not a bad idea. But I don't like the idea of them running some utility thing through a through an enclosed no, pipe. Right? Yeah. yeah, I think that part makes sense. Yeah, it sure does. Because that's going to create washouts. And How do they? I mean, when they're boring now with the with the new boring rigs that they've got now. How do they know that they're not going to go through it? I mean, they don't. Well, the, how's this going to prevent it? Though that's what's got me buffalo. It will. Basically, it'll probably be the same way it is now to just give us authority to tell them to get out of it, you know. Um, Do something. And, and right now, when, when we call the phone company uh, or something like that and tell them they've penetrated, they're usually fairly good about coming and showing yeah. up. The, the, the issue is, is, is uh, you know, <laughs> plumbers. I mean, that's, that's the one that, you know, we've got to get to that sewer line. There's nothing we can do except bust out your storm drain pipe and shove it through here. Yeah. And, you know, uh, you know I, I know of a few. I, I even know of one that the city facilities people do. Greg, how do you know that you say you'll find it you know, eventually? But if they're, if they're bored of, let's just say, a cable DB line, yeah. and they're going through a pipe, you won't know it until it starts backing up, I assume. No, usually we, we'll get a sinkhole in the yeah. yard. Yeah, That's usually how we find out the pipe. And it goes into oh, the water. Well, okay. There'll be a sinkhole form in the yard, and we'll run uh, a camera through it, and there'll be a utility run through it. I see. That's, okay. that's usually how we find them. Uh, and if they're born, they're not going to seal that off. No. I mean, they're they're going to have a bigger hole than you've got a pipe. And so the water's going to come out. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. That's I think something should be done, but I don't know exactly. As a, Daryl, Daryl will get that language. We'll send it out so everybody can think about it another month, and uh, we can kind of think about the exceptions that we we might want to add and clarify that this is for for you know new construction and add an exception for you know an existing developed corridor with existing utilities, you know, yeah. uh, that sort of thing. Uh, I don't have an issue with that. Well, that, that section A in there, is that, that hasn't been altered at all, that, that language? No, that's the same. That's how the code reads right I now. I didn't, yeah. I didn't look at it. What about pipes that are going across the ditches now? Is this grandfathered in? Do they have to move those? Yeah, I mean, essentially, they're, they're I wouldn't say they were, I mean, the, the intent is not to go identify all of them and give anybody a list of, hey, go get these out, yeah. you know. But as we're working on a corridor, if there's a water line through a pipe and we can adjust it, then we ought to, which is kind of what we do now. You know, if, if but I know out here on uh, uh, North Patrick, um, we have water lines through box culverts. We have gravity sewer lines through box culverts. I mean, there's just a section through there where there's all the utility pipes just penetrating through there. And they've been there forever, yeah. you know. And we just redid that system and went, you know, you know we, we wish, but we're not, we're not gonna tackle this, this monster right now. The, the benefit of it's, yeah. you know, kind of slim. But if somebody came in and said, hey, I'm gonna build a you know, a five-story five structure on this corner, and I need to 
you know, do water and sewer, and maybe at that point they're saying, hey, let's go ahead and get all this fixed and where it's right. You know, it really depends on what the, uh, to me, on what the uh, end goal is at that time, you know, what we're really doing. But if there was a pipe going across an open ditch and, it, and, and it's blocking it, are we going to say, you know, we really need to have that repaired? The intent of this is not to go find every one of them that is is penetrating the ditch. I know there's one on, on Whitens Creek down by Industrial Drive that is encased in concrete. And we've come in and we've actually, we had to put a smaller hole underneath it because it was basically backing water up three foot upstream of it. We basically had a lake. And so we had to go underneath it and. and create a piping system so it would just pipe underneath and drain that yeah, water out. Really. I mean, it's a nuisance, yeah. but City Water Light doesn't have any other option right there at this time to do anything different. It's a gravity system with, with fixed elevations. So, you know, there's, there is a solution, but, you know, the problem is not as, you know. Sure. You gotta use your is, common sense. You know, yeah, there's, I mean, I don't know if we can add a common sense clause to the ordinance, but, you know. That and, would be good. You know, common sense clause. Yeah. We'll try to figure that out, you know. But I think that exception for yeah. existing utilities, I don't want to say anything grandfathered in that, you know, you're there by right. I've been there long enough, I'm there by right. No. Okay. You're, you're, you're in there because we, we hadn't told you to get out yet. Yeah. Okay. You know. We got to figure something out on that. Cause, yeah. You know, you think about that. You know, you lived in a house, or you've had a business, or whatever, been there forever, buy a new building, and then somebody has the right to, not even arbitrarily say, yeah, this didn't work for us anymore. You got to go. Here's another X number of thousands of dollars. Tr truthfully, none of these property owners have a right to be in the public right away. These private sewer, these sewer lines coming across, connecting the sewer system. They don't have a right to be in that public right away. By right, there's no law that says. Have a lateral in a right of way. Mm -hmm. You got another city ordinance that says if they're within 300 feet, I think it is, of the sewer main, they, they've got to connect to it. They've got to connect to it, but that doesn't that doesn't give individual property owners the right. The public right of there's no law that says that an individual owner has the right to be in the public right of way. There's one that says utility companies have a right to be in public right of way. Um, you know, and now we've even got one where self phone service, but there's no, there's no law that says that an individual property owner has a right. So we have an encroachment permit that we issue by the city to give them permission to be in the right of way. And then we also have an indemnification clause in that we make them execute that says if there's anything that you're if you cause any damage to us we'll remove you and we're not going to you know and if you cause any harm to somebody you're indemnifying the city for the harm you caused and so that's how we allow people in the right of way but these sewer lines that run across the right of way into the into the sewer system they're they're there just because the city has allowed it but they're not there by right there, there's no legal right that they have to be in the right of way so, I mean, the city could come and, and not that we would by any means, you know, start disconnecting people, but they're not there by right. Um, but you would assume that they've been given authority by the city to be there when they did. You might have said that. <laughs> so really, I mean, what, what I'm thinking, this would help is the new development kind of standardizing the location of the utility uh, and that would make it easier to trace these things it would be. And, and the ones that's already there that's not causing a problem you know but hopefully this would this would clarify locations and, and prevent that from yeah. happening so. but back to your permission and the right are two different things well, I mean, sometimes they don't get permits. I mean, sometimes yeah. they just have but, them. But again, you know, the, 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 the fact that we have allowed somebody doesn't give them the right to it, you know. Yeah. Just kind of like City Water Light. For a long time, they, collect, they allowed 
people to take their, their septic system sludge to the wastewater plant. And they were nice to allow that for such a long time, but at some point they decided, we just can't do that anymore. You know, they, they removed that permission, right? It was never a right, it was, they allowed it. it was, and, and there's things that we allowed that's not by right. Common sense calls needs to be there. Somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I say it's just something we feel like we need we need to work on, yeah. and what it what it ends up being, we'll we'll hash through. But it's just something to think about. Okay, you're going to go to the duplexes. Yeah, this is another one to think about. Uh, we have an exception for duplexes. Um, in an individual duplex hasn't necessarily been a problem for us, but we're getting people that are buying up multiple lots and putting duplexes on adjacent lots to each other and hot, having common facilities, such as a driveway going to a parking lot back behind them. So they'll have one access point for four or five duplexes, but the duplexes are individual lots but we're not seeing any sort of site plan for those. Any, any detailed stormwater management plan. Tell me what they're doing again, Craig. They're, they're buying adjacent lots okay. to each other. Okay. And each lot, they can put a duplex on. Okay. All right. Let's say four lots. Four okay. lots. Four and duplex. so they end up with, with four duplexes, okay. eight units. Well, they're exempt from our stormwater management regulations because duplexes are exempt. So they don't have to come up with a stormwater management Why plan for their property. So if you, if somebody came in and said, I'm going to have one lot, I'm going to put five units on it, and it, they're all going to be duplexes, we would get a, okay. a stormwater management plan for that site. Yeah. But the way they're doing it is they're buying up multiple properties. They're already lotted, and they can fit a duplex on them. They're just adjacent to each other. And they're building like one driveway going into a large parking lot okay. that serves all four units. The, the, the problem that has happened to us is um, we've got sections of the code that says you can't store stormwater greater than six inches in a parking lot. Right? We've had one recently that there was a problem and we looked at it and they had a, they had a plan. They had an engineer put a plan together for it and they've got over uh, 14 inches of, uh, of water in their parking lot on their front there, which is against code. We never saw it. The worst is when they built it, it wasn't built to what the engineer designed either, and so it's actually worse in the field than even what they had planned to do. And what brought it to our attention was our, our Street design code for driveways requires a six inch rise in the first 15 foot of a driveway. So back curb or gutter line, you come up six inches in the first 15 feet to keep yeah. street water from running onto private property. Yeah. Well, they, they inverted this, they went down. And so the street water comes down the street, runs directly into their property, and they're already too low. <coughs> and the water has no place to go. It goes into a yard and now there's a pond. There's not even a pipe for the water to get out of there. It's just a, so now they just want like, you to fix it. Yeah. Well, no, we've, we've denied their occupancy permit to resolve the problem. But the, the problem really stems from, we never saw their plans to begin with. You know, they, their site plan is, we got this lot, here's the setbacks, here's the building, and that's it. That's all basically we get for, uh, for duplexes and for single family residential. We Do don't, they hook all the sewer lines and everything all in common? No, they're, no, they're all being individually okay. sewered. Right. You know, but it is a, it's a common development, but the fact that we've got this dupe, you know, for a single duplex, you're exempt, there's nothing for us to ask for. And so um, we'd like to see somehow that, you know, I don't think that every duplex needs to do a stormwater detention pond. I mean, that's not my idea of what, I just want to make sure that the elevations and grades are what they need to be, that they're not 
creating a long-term problem for themselves and then at some point calling the city and asking us how we're going to fix it. Um, and that's the way this one's going to be is, you know, how's the city going to fix it? You know, now that it's a problem. I don't, I'm not going to prove it until you fix it. Um, is, is kind of the stance that we're taking with it. So if you had 20 lots and you did 20 individual duplexes, mm -hmm. then you could have a parking lot to recover 20 lots. Mm -hmm. You're getting away with it because if you develop something that had a 500 foot parking lot, mm -hmm. you would have to, You'd have to do something. Do something. Mm -hmm. And so, so I guess in the exception of whatever you would have, if there was an adjoining duplex that would trigger something, maybe that would get you beyond the one. And so, if it's if it's going to be one that's adjacent to one, then that triggers something. I don't know if we put some sort of common development clause or something in there, unless it's a common development. Um, uh, it's hard to say by you know uh, by the same owner. Um, because they could all they could yeah. create five different corporations and each one build one, you know. And, and it might be cheaper just to submit a plan and create five different corporations. But you know, um, you know, I, I don't. You know, well, I or, don't or we could just you know duplexes submit uh, a detailed site plans that they're exempt from. Uh, you know. Just, no, then you'd end up with a subdivision that's doing, well, subdivision requires stormwater management on each subdivision. This is on infill. Yeah. And so we may want to just clarify for infill, infill lots. So the duplexes on infill lots must submit a site plan. So what would the term infill lots define that? Infill would be any of these um, developed subdivisions or developed areas of town where you go in and there's a vacant lot in there that hasn't been built on and you go in there and put something in it after after it's already been developed. So you're filling in a gap that's yeah. existing. We may just said instead of infill, redevelopment of, exist, redevelopment of an existing lot with a duplex requires a site plan. Yeah, because they could tear down a house. Yeah. Right, yeah. And I think duplex construction been pretty popular because the economic value. Well, what you're seeing is, is you know, when we started the new um, codes for duplexes and multifamily, um, we don't allow parking in the front anymore. You know how it used to, they just right. throw a parking lot in the front. Yeah. And now it's got to be on the side or in the rear. And so what they're doing is now they're combining these parking lots. So used to, they'd just run every one of them off the street. You'd have your parking right there in the in the front of the duplex. Now they can't do that. So now they've got to go back to the back and, and build a parking lot for everything to serve. And, and so that's where we've started seeing this. I mean, truthfully, it'd be great for even single family to submit site plans, but I don't know if that's a fight we want to start or not. I mean, it would, it would we have so many problems with, you know, going out there and people putting brand new homes, not even getting them in the setbacks or getting them over property lines. And, and um, I mean, a site plan would stop that, but you know, I mean, the extra expense, it's just, it's just a headache that I'm not sure that, <laughs> that we want to. I don't know if we stop it, make the blame on you that you didn't catch it. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean you, you got, you, you got bad builders. You, you, you'd have to yeah. require them to have surveyors set the, set everything out there before they start, before they do their footings. And uh, because, I mean, we've seen in the last, well, in the last year, we've seen, you know, where instead of pulling off the property line, they're pulling off the edge of the curb and they're right. 10, 15 feet up and, you know, and, I mean, that, that should be caught, but, you know, we don't go out there and survey it to see that it's in the right place. Um, and so it's, it's just a, it's a problem, but, I'm not sure it's, like I said, I'm not sure that's a fight. At least I don't want to start right now. Uh, and, and with single family, if you don't remember, I think it may have been a year or so ago, there's a section in the uh, uh, building code that says that you have to be one foot plus 1% one 
slope uh, above the gutter or the spot where the property drains. So we, you know, that's always been code. It was never anything that was kind of enforced. We, the city council passed a resolution saying we, we we're going to start enforcing that now. And so we have them, we have some, you know, when we go out and look at a site and it's obvious that, that they're creating their own drainage problem and say, look, here's the code. Um, you know, you need to do this to make sure your property drains. And so I think we're getting, we're getting better results with the single family drainage wise. And, um, and even with the, with the uh, duplexes, it's the same, same falls into place. And this particular one, the building itself is high and dry. It's just, they're not gonna be able to get in and out of the place. Um, you know, and they may be calling for emergency services because they're, I mean, they're, they're gonna be stuck in there. You know, the water's gonna be, you know, 18 inches deep around and their cars are probably going to get wet and you know it's because they didn't follow what the code says and we had no way of looking at it no way requiring them to submit that to us so we could review it to make sure that that we were okay with it it is we give them this exemption because of the duplex um, you know you, you want to think that all these people are, are know every code out there and are going to do it exactly right but you know you, you do have to to check those things because I mean they've got this thing completely built parking lot and all and they're like well what do we do now you know tear it all out put it in the way it's supposed to be you know it's so y'all going to develop some language and we'll talk about it yeah yeah so we will look at how we add uh, Redevelopment of existing lots and site plans, but those those are two issues that have that have come up. They, they've been nagging issues for a while that we'd like to, to try to work on and come up with a, a better way to, to do it um, if we can. Um, you got any other new business? Uh, no. I don't believe there's any new business. I do have one piece of old business. Um, I got uh, an email uh, yes, late yesterday afternoon, um, and we did not get that next hazard mitigation grant um, that we applied for. So um, I think it was close to half a million dollars. Uh, we didn't get funding for it. So uh, I think we will. What was that project you were going to do with that one? That was, there were about four or five houses that we were going to tear down. Yeah. Um, Additional houses that were repetitive loss, but like I said, we didn't get money this time. So we'll we'll reapply on the next cycle. Maybe we'll get it. Greg, how many repetitive loss houses do do we still have? Uh, I the number is in around twenty, I think. Uh, we took care of our severe repetitive loss ones with that first grant. And so we still have some, we still have repetitive loss structures, but. How much does it cost to tear down a house? Depends on the size of the house. Ballpark. Um, they've been around any less than $10,000, 10, 12, maybe something like that. I didn't think it'd be that much. But, yeah. but on disposal, you gotta dispose. Get it down and move it off. Yeah. 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 You, you know, if there's asbestos abatement or anything like that, the price is gonna go up too, but. Um, the typical house, I think we've been spending like six to eight thousand. I thought, thought seventy five hundred yeah. was the last that's, one. That's the number I thought. Yeah, six, six to eight thousand and disposal. Yeah. Unless you've got a basement, then you've got <coughs> added cost. Yeah. Any other old business? I mentioned one thing we talked about going on a bus tour, but with the coronavirus lingering around. Until yeah. that gets cleared up, I'd yeah. say that we shouldn't be in that kind of close proximity, but still something we want to do. Because I know uh, uh, Coleman would want us to go out and, and look at North, North Area, which I think we should do. Anyway. Any other communication? I just want to go see some of these board rigs that went through the pipe. Yeah, I don't know how they do <laughs> Just drive around, man. They're all over the place. <laughs> They're down there at the, the, the five-way stop right now. I'm sure they're drilling through something they're not yeah. supposed to be. But, uh, 
Well, let's go around. Joe, you got anything? No. No. Anything else? Glad to have you back. So you was teaching a class or something? Is that right? Finished it. Maybe Finished it. Cool. We're acquainted with Zoom now. <laughs> In the corner? Nothing. Nothing? Greg, any other comments? No, sir. All right. Public comments? I don't see anybody here. So I'd accept a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. Second. Second. All favor say aye. Aye. Oh.